Alrighty guys, uh, Fallowcraft Farm had requested a video on my needler, uh, Burr Mel. He's grind corn. Um, first I want to say, uh, sorry I haven't had any videos up lately. Uh, the past week I just uh, been busy and been doing stuff, you know, it's not really worth filming or anything. Just kind of odds and ends stuff. Been waiting on parts on the uh, 504 International. I had to get bearings out of several different locations. Their warehouse is so it took about a week for everything to come in. Uh, today's Sunday. I'm going to start back on that tomorrow, though. So I'll have a video of it in the next couple days. Uh, I got a couple of requests for videos. Got one of the 70s. I made one of the all over 70s, but because my camera was, or glasses were messing up, it didn't turn out. And so I. Uh, I put a new SD card in it and it fixed it though. Um, got a request for uh, likes and dislikes on the three point hitch. I got a uh, request for an overview on the 7800. And then I got a request for uh, overview of the shop area in my toolbox. Uh, so I'll try to get all of those done before spring here. Um, well, anyway, this is the, it's a, Needler is the company that made it. Um, it's spelled Canodler is how it sounds, but uh, on the decal, if you can see that or not. It's K-N-O-E-D-L-E-R uh, is how you, but then there it says, say Needler instead of Canodler. Uh, so it's a Needler, Corn Belt, Burr Mill. Uh, Grandpa bought this thing back in the, early 60s bought it brand new they had this is about the only model i've ever seen of these they had a couple options uh some of the earlier ones had uh, little short tires on it that were only about that tall and at some point they changed to these taller ones um 540 pto shaft uh just dump the corn in here and it, it grinds it in there and augers up and goes out the end um some of them I've seen have an option. I'd like to find one. It's, it's had a self-loading option. Just had a little auger that went down and you just pulled it up next to a gravity wagon. Grandpa never ordered that option because uh, they always loaded usually out of the back of the grain truck. They just filled the grain truck up and backed it here and just kind of shoveled it in. So they never had that option, but now I use gravity wagon and so I'd kind of like to have it. And this summer I might try to rig something up, uh, kind of a you know, hydraulic motor and a loading a little longer to or self loading deal since I'm grinding more and more corn. Pretty windy out today, if you can't tell. Um, but yeah, it's early 60s model. It's really simple design. Uh, shaft comes in there, it's got a right angle gear set uh, to the shaft that runs up, and uh, that shaft runs up, and I might have to go. I'll see if I can find the burrs, but you dump the corn in here, and hopefully you can see this, uh, but it just kind of funnels down in there, it's a cone-shaped thing, and let me see if I can find the burrs real quick. Alright, I found them, uh, with the rolling harrow in the shop, we're working on it. Um, how this works is, this inner piece, um, is station, or it spins on the shaft, and there's an adjustment knob I'll show you when we go back and you can move it up and down. This piece is stationary, uh, goes in the housing, and, it, and this is stationary, you dump the corn in, and then that other cone piece kind of funnels it, and the corn goes in this ring here, and as that thing spins, uh, depending on how close you have that set, is how close it grinds it, uh, or how fine it grinds it. It's not a terribly, you can't get it like ground to powder, but it does a good job, and it'll crack probably about 99% of the kernel there's probably greater than that it's probably about 90 I mean usually I had trouble with it and I had to have it set sharpened um, no, I'll get into that in a minute but um, I had trouble with it uh, it wasn't grinding quite fine enough so I had to have it set sharpened I usually if it's, when it's coming out um, I usually grab a handful of the stuff and usually I accept, you know, if I can find one kernel in that handful that hadn't been cracked yet. Um, 
that's good enough. Uh, and it was getting to where I was getting a couple kernels and a handful uh, where it wouldn't grind them. It, they'd just pass on through. So I had to have, it, have the burgers sharpened and now it's doing good again. And I can't remember. Maybe this is the sharpened set. I think this is actually the sharpened set and I put a different set in. I can't remember. Um, these, you can't buy these anymore. They are uh, pretty hard to come by. I just got the set that's in the mail and then this set. Um, because the company that went out of bit or the company went out of business probably in the 70s sometime. Excuse the mess here. I'll walk back there real quick. Well, the company went out of business in the 70s. And uh, I think sometime in that time frame. And a welding shop in North, they were made in Northern Illinois, and a welding shop in Northern Illinois, you know, does whatever. They actually bought them out, and, and uh, they can still get bearings for them, and they make a few parts. A few The parts in the machine that are made out of mild steel, like the shafts and stuff, they can still mill those out for you, because I had to buy a new shaft for the middle vertical shaft and I had to buy that and they can make that or make that stuff new um, but the burrs and the cast iron pieces in it you can't get any more um, it's kind of a shame but they don't wear out that quick anyways you know I mean you can, they'll run a long time on a set of burrs and then you can then the place will actually resharpen them um, it's kind of pricey uh, but they can resharpen them and so I don't expect I'll even have to have ever have them sharpened again unless you know I'm running 50 or 60 head of cattle and I don't think I'll be doing that um, but this uh, how you change the burrs there's a bolt take that bolt out and this whole thing just kind of flops sideways uh, and it pivots right there and you just lift the burrs out and then you got to take the uh, two 5 8 bolts there. You take that off, pull the cone piece off, and then you just change it burrs. I can do it in about five minutes. This knob here is how you help, uh, how you adjust how close the thing runs together, or how close the burrs run together. And then it just runs over to the, or grinds it and goes into this area here and just runs over, or it kind of got some little paddles that push it over into there and just run it up out the auger. This thing will turn, just keep turning around and around. And then once you get it in the position you want, you tighten up this bolt and that just kind of holds it um, in place while you're grinding. And then you loosen it and spin it back uh, when you're done. So it's a pretty simple little machine. Um, I think if you, had, if, you, if you can find one, they work good. And uh, you can probably pick one up for a couple hundred bucks. Um, I think what else? Needler also made a uh, like a little mix wagon thing. It was just really like a miniature auger wagon, actually. It held like 75 bushel, probably. They made that. I can't remember. It seems like they made something else. Just small, you know, feeding stuff for uh, livestock feeding equipment back in the day. But. I think that's probably about it. it takes 80 90 gear oil you just fill that up and that plug there just fill it up it holds about a gallon or two well, maybe it is two gallons holds two gallons i think and just fill it up and away you go i had to go through and put new bearings in it uh, several years ago because when that shaft went bad i went through and just put a bunch of bearings in it I put the new bearings in it and whatnot because it had never been gone through. Some of them were getting kind of loose. So that'll be good for as much as I'll ever use it. You can adjust, loosen these knobs there, and you can adjust this to spin to whatever you know side you want to feed on or you know dump corn in on. But, it doesn't take much horsepower to run. I had seen on the internet on a discussion forum someone was talking one time that uh, 
I think they ran it with a farm all cub that was like 10 horsepower, so not a huge power requirement. And it'd probably grind, oh, much wood that thing grind? It'd probably grind, I don't know if it'd do 100 bushels an hour. Yeah, it'd probably do 100 bushel, bushel an hour. Yeah, it'd probably do 150 bushel an hour. I bet, I mean, it does all right, uh, as long as you, <laughs> for me, just keep bucking it in there. But my grandpa had 49 dairy cows in the bowl and, you know, everything else he fed with it. And then he had 20 beef cattle for a while. He used it for years and years for that. And now I'm using it again, so definitely been a good meal. But I think I'll about do it, so hope it isn't too dark uh, for you back here in the corner of the shed. And, uh, Thanks Fallowcraft Farm for uh, requesting the video and uh, thanks everybody for watching.